it ever felt your heart racing, skipping beats, or pounding out of rhythm? It might feel like butterflies in your chest or a drum roll that won't stop. Well, it could just be stress, but it might also be something more serious. Atrial fibrillation, or AF as we call it. Now, this condition affects about 38 million people worldwide, and today I'm going to break down for you in simple terms what it is, why it matters, and what you can do about it. So buckle up and keep watching. So what is atrial fibrillation or AF? Right, let's start with the basics. So atrial fibrillation is a problem with how your heart beats. So normally your heart has a steady, predictable rhythm controlled by electrical signals. So it's like a ticking of a clock, regular and predictable. But when you have atrial fibrillation, the rhythm becomes chaotic, like a clock that's gone haywire, ticking fast and unevenly. The electrical signals cause the upper chambers of the heart, called the atria, to quiver or twitch instead of pumping properly. So this irregular rhythm can affect how well your heart moves or blood around the body. Um, some people only have AF from time to time, we call this paroxysmal AF, but for others it can be permanent. So what symptoms do you get? Right, so how might this feel? Some people notice right away that something's off. You might feel that you're having palpitations, like where your heart is just pounding and going really fast. We do all get palpitations from time to time. You might have noticed when you've had too much caffeine or when you're nervous. Um, but this in AF is all about the irregular pattern. So it's not just fast, although it can be irregular and fast. And with this, you might feel dizzy or lightheaded and you might feel like you're gonna faint. Some people notice their short breath, even when you're just doing small things like climbing the stairs. And if you, you might even have chest pains when you're exerting yourself. You might feel really tired, finding it just harder to get on with normal things you do normally manage. But some people with AF don't have any symptoms and we just pick it up on a routine check. And that's why it's really important to talk about. Atrial fibrillation isn't just about feeling uncomfortable, it's about what can happen if it's not managed and why we need to get on top of it. So what are the risks of AF? Well, when your heart beats irregularly, the blood doesn't flow as it should smoothly around the body. This increases the risk of blood clots forming. And if one of these clots travels to your brain, it can cause a stroke. So in fact, people with AF are about five times more likely to have a stroke than those without it. And these st strokes tend to be more severe. Okay, that was the bad news, which is pretty bad. But here's the good news. There's a lot we can do to lower that risk. Um, but first, let's look at why AF might happen in the first place. So what causes atrial fibrillation? Well, anyone can get it, but several factors can contribute to the development of AF. That includes things like high blood pressure, which puts extra strain on the heart, heart diseases such as coronary artery disease or heart valve problems, um, other medical conditions like having an overactive thyroid or lung disease, and there are lifestyle factors. So we know things like excessive alcohol, um, obesity, smoking, taking recreational drugs, and high levels of stress. And then there's age, there's not much you can do about that, but it is more common as you get older, especially over 65. And then there are certain medi medications that make it more likely, such as levothyroxine or lithium. And in fact, if you do endurance sports like long distance running or cycling. Sometimes though, for about one in 10 people, we do not know why they have AF. There's no specific cause identified. So how do we diagnose AF? Well, if you've noticed symptoms, or even if you haven't, but you're concerned, how do we figure out if it's actually AF or just palpitations? Well, the most common way is an electrocardiogram or an ECG. If you're in the States, you'll know it as an EKG. This is a quick painless test where we stick small sensors onto your chest to record your heart's electrical activity. Sometimes you might need to do this over 24 hours or even a few days if we're just catching those irregular episodes. We might do what's called an echocardiogram. This is an ultrasound scan to have a look at the heart structure and function. And we'll do some blood tests probably to check for underlying conditions like thyroid problems. Sometimes you might um, do a chest x-ray to have a look at the lungs and the heart. If AF is confirmed, the next step is working out the best treatment plan for you. So how is AF treated? Well, when we're managing AF, we have three key goals in mind. Firstly, we want to control the heart's rate and rhythm. So we probably might give you medications to slow your heart rate or help it restore a normal rhythm. Secondly, we want to prevent those blood clots, don't we? So to do this, we often um, prescribe anticoagulants like warfarin or the newer drugs such as apixaban. These kind of, what we think of as kind of thin the blood um, to make it less likely you're gonna have these clots and strokes. That's very important. And thirdly, we want to address the underlying causes. So obviously if you do have things like high blood pressure or thyroid issues, we need to get that sorted. In some emergency cases, or if the medications don't work, 
then there are other treatments um, that you might have to go to the hospital for, such as cardioversion. This is where there's a small electric shock to reset your heart rhythm um, or ablation. Um, this targets the faulty electrical signals and this could be considered. So what can you do? All right, now let's talk about you. If you have AF or you think you might, here are some practical tips. So firstly, keep an eye on your symptoms, write them down if needed. This can help your doctor figure out what's working and what's not and what might be triggering things. Do take your medications exactly as they're prescribed. If you're worried about side effects, don't just stop, talk to your doctor. And alongside medical treatments, lifestyle changes can significantly impact the management of AF. So firstly, maintain a healthy weight. This can really help reduce the strain on the heart. Make sure you're eating a balanced diet. We know it's how important it is to focus on the fruits, the vegetables, the whole grains, and the lean proteins. And exercise regularly. So aim for at least 150 minutes of moderate activity per week, like walking or cycling. Don't be afraid to exercise. Limiting alcohol and caffeine can be a good idea to prevent this triggering of the AF. And quit smoking. You know how important it is for your overall health. But also manage your stress. So techniques like meditation or yoga can help. And finally, don't be afraid to ask questions, whether it's about your medications, your treatments, or what changes you can make. We're here to help. Atrial fibrillation might feel overwhelming, but with the right plan, you can take control and protect your heart health. So key takeaways. Here's what I want you to remember. Atrial fibrillation is common and treatable, but it's crucial to manage it to lower the risk of complications like stroke. And you have the power to make the changes that can really improve your quality of life. Remember, if you notice an irregular heartbeat or related symptoms, don't ignore them. Early detection and management of atrial fibrillation is crucial to prevent the complications. Thank you for watching today. If you found this helpful, give it a like, share it with someone who might need it, and don't forget to subscribe for more health tips. So until next time, take care of your heart. It's the only one you've got. Thanks for watching.